What's up everyone? My name is Wade Thomas with Black Tie Barn Candle Company. We do a lot of candle making and teaching. Um, I've been asked to do a quick video or tour of my uh, candle making area workshop and what have you. And so I wanted to go ahead and do that for you. Hopefully you enjoy. I'm going to show you a few different things today. Some of where I do some of my candle making, my office area, as well as some of my stock shelves, overstock shelves and display shelves where I put up some of my newer products or things that are seasonal. And then also, you know, even where I do a little bit of my filming for uh, videos such as this. So, and I, and I do that in a few different places, but um, I'm going to show you those as well. So hopefully you enjoy. Let's get going. So first up, while we're out here, this is uh, one of the bar areas, and this is where I really do a lot of the filming. Um, so if I'm doing little quick videos, tips, tricks, how to's, things like that. And I'll even do a little bit of uh, basic candle making and product making out here. It's also where I've sat and worked directly with other candle makers one on one um, in little shortened classes or basically just like, like I mentioned, tips and tricks and that kind of thing. Um, but I will also, during certain times of the year when I have a lot more to make, I'll also use this area to addish, for additional pouring tables. So I'll use the bar and I've got a protective thing that I put down across the bar, as well as the countertop back there. This does work as an overflow area when I need to make several batches, you know, especially around later part of the year, getting into fall and winter, make a lot more candles you know, uh, in, in short periods of time where I need to pump out 500,000 candles in a day and you got to really work, work up those batches. And so this makes a great area for that. To the left is a wax melt display board that I use. And, and the reason I have that there is um, it's just a quick spot for me to grab some wax melts on demand that I know I've got in stock. Um, I've got overstock other places as well, but I will do live open house events here as well and so this is one place where I'll store the wax melts and then I have them scattered throughout other places as well so it's just one place to keep them. To the right I've got one of my display shelves and now what I'll typically do here is put up newer products especially ones I need or product photography of. I'll also put out uh, some seasonal scents here as well and again if I'm having an open house or a show then I'll stock these quite differently for different purposes but it is just a nice display shelf for some of my products nearby when I need it. Spin around to the right here. That's just a bathroom back in the back, but I will do my, a lot of my product photography here, and I'll talk about in other videos how I do this. Um, and then back behind here, there is another uh, display shelf as well. It's kind of hard to see. It's a little dark over here right now, but uh, let's see if I can get in there close. It's it's really hard to see. Actually, here's a light. Let's see if this helps. Uh, not really. It's okay. Anyways, this is just another area where I do some uh, some of my displays. I go ahead and shut that light back off. And then through the barn door here is office. Um, and as you might guess, I do a lot of different things in the office area. Mostly just business work, right? So processing order sales, working on uh, new products, new designs, it's it's what you do as an office for. There's really not much to talk about in here. And of course, I will do some filming in here as well. Um, so not really going to spend much time in the office. And then back through this door is how we get to my workshop for the candle making. So, oh, and before I go that far, uh, I have some overstock shelves out here as well. So depending on what I need, these are stocked with different things. Sometimes they're stocked with just testers, like some of this left shelf is here. Um, I also carry overstock of melts, um, seasonal melts, and then seasonal candles as well. Back here is the workshop. And I'm actually going to post some additional footage that's going to play a little bit down here um, during this video. That's kind of how I put together some of this recently. I actually just put in the floor, which, which I, I really like. Not too long ago, this was just a concrete floor. And it, that, that was fine, and it worked. worked it was no problem, right? But um, it... It was a little harder to keep clean, especially if you had any spills, make any messes, whatever, but also made it a little more difficult to temperature control. And so this is just much more comfortable. It wasn't really complicated, but uh, I knocked it out with my, my youngest little boy uh, in just a few hours. And it's really just added to the feel of this workshop area. So I've been really happy with it.
but let me show you a little bit. We'll go around in a circle. So when you first walk into the left here, this is just really display materials, packaging materials, that kind of stuff. So I've got different, different boxes. Um, I've got packing tape. I've got kind of ribbons and miscellaneous packaging materials and small boxes. Uh, nothing really fancy, nothing really directly related to candle making. It's just a stock area. Um, to the next shelf is jars. Now I've got jars all over in this workshop and additional storage outside of here and also upstairs and even in a storage unit. So I've got plenty, tons of jars, but I do keep s several here for constant use. And I also keep a lot of tester jars around as well since I go through those constantly, but uh, basically just shelf full of boxes of jars. Next, I come up to fragrance oils. Now, again, I have a lot of fragrance oils. I carry a lot of different fragrances and I do a lot of different mixes and combinations and such. Um, I have fragrance oils from several different companies uh, currently. And as you can see, I've got Aztec Candle Supply. I've got Candle Science. I've got Nature's Garden. I've got, you know, a, a lot of different uh, suppliers for a lot of different my materials. Now, a little tip here, if, if anyone's ever done this, is if you use some old uh, straight sided jars or mason jar boxes like these, these make great little dividers and holders for your fragrance oils. And the, the really nice thing about them is it helps you organize them, whether you want to do it by season, by scent, by uh, notes, or by alphabetical order, which is actually what I've been doing, although I change it up. But what's super nice is there's a holder for each one. And they're easy to kind of shuffle around if you need to reorganize them a little bit. Plus, because they're in boxes, if you have a leak or something like that, it's going to protect a little bit than just sitting on a bare shelf. So these are really good. Uh, anyways, so this is mostly just uh, oils on this shelf. Oh, up top, just more jars, molds, that kind of thing. The next shelf is wicks. And there's miscellaneous stuff down below as well. And I have tons of wicks. I, I mean, I probably have 30 different types of wicks. And of course, I have every size of all those types of wicks. They go back pretty deep on the shelves back there kind of hard to see but there's more and more boxes and they're all organized by type and by size and so it's very easy for me to find the ones I need you know just depending on the wax and the jar I'm using uh, the wicks vary quite a bit so um, then I've got some wood wicks down there I don't use those quite as much to the left I've got this little mobile cart here as well and the purpose of this mobile cart is if I do have to work at a different area in the workshop or out in the other area I was pointing, I can kind of load it up with the items I really need and just bring it with me, which is pretty nice, handy. Uh, next is one of my workshop tables. Now, it's a multifunctional bench, workbench here. For starters, it uses it, it serves as some storage for me. I've got some lids and packaging materials underneath. I used to store some clamshells over there, and then up top I've got some uh, different you know storage items as well. But I really use this for the tools that I use, especially for testing or wick setting. So I do have warning labels up there, but it's really about supplies and materials and tools that I use. So I will use this when I'm doing testing. I'll even pour on this table as well, of course. Um, it makes a great pouring table, but it's really kind of my random workshop bent. To the right of that is just a storage shelf. It's got pouring pots, uh, paper towels, uh, rags, samples back there, the thing's full of samples, cups that I'll use occasionally for fragrance oils, uh, dyes up top, and then this is my wax table is what I refer to it as. And it really is just where I melt all the wax, of course, and then weigh everything. And it's also kind of my working table. So after I weigh the wax, then I'll weigh the oil. And this is where I do all the blending and mixing and everything. And below are some of the more popular waxes that I use. I track the lots that I use per, per wax and per batch. And so that way, if I ever run into an issue with a particular candle or set of candles I can trace it back to what lot of wax that was and uh, that way if it is an issue with the wax I can track it all down and take corrective measures if needed. Um, doesn't happen very often but it does happen with suppliers so uh, just uh, maybe a little tip there if you ever want to consider doing that. Moving over most of this is going to be storage still below and up top. Uh, I've got lids, waxes, miscellaneous supplies, uh, wick centering tools in these drawers, um, you know, all sorts of different miscellaneous items, but it's really a, a lot about lids on this, on these two shelves. And up top is one of the pouring tables. Now I use several pouring tables. I've kind of shown that already, but I like these because they're well lit. I keep the lights up above. They're really flat. These, these type of shelves aren't normally flat, but what I did is taken out some of the rails 
and then I put in this really dense level particle board across the top, um, or not particle board. Um, oh, I just forget the name of it. If you remember what the name of that board is, put it in the comments. It's it's great dense board. Um, anyways, it's really level, so it, it makes a great pouring table. To the right, again, more storage underneath. We're getting in miscellaneous jars here, tumblers, that kind of thing. Up top is another pouring table. Same type of board up top to keep it level. Um, I've been It's kind of a mess right now because I've been doing a lot of testing, and uh, this is the time of year where things start getting a little crazy. So um, it is a mess in here, to, so forgive me, but another pouring table. It's also, when not full of materials, um, I'll also weigh and package everything in here. And so that's what this last shelf is as well as the scale there this last shelf is where i will uh, finish up labeling uh, weigh everything package things up for shipping um, it's again jars underneath and then i've got shipping boxes and materials up top um, actually behind the sign here is another shelf and it's got a bunch of packing materials bubble wrap peanuts all that kind of stuff additionally up here is the pegboard holding label these are again the most common ones at the current time or season i will cycle these out uh, with other labels and then of course I make all sorts of custom labels uh, whenever I feel like it or just want to do another collection or line of candles but these are my typical standard signature collection labels if that makes any sense um, and then again it's just some miscellaneous tools and supplies up top to help me with packaging and that's really the workshop in a nutshell I'll give you another kind of it looks it's it's wider than it looks on the camera it looks fairly narrow but it's actually plenty comfortable again that's just kind of a scan the workshop and i wanted to show this because even though it's a it's a smallish area and not not super ideal for a workshop setup well i mean i say that but it, it really has been kind of nice i i just wanted to show the area because it really shows that if you get creative with how you want to set things up and you really set up kind of an assembly line or almost like a workflow process that really helps you figure out the best way to set up your area so before you just kind of start setting things up and randomly organizing and randomly putting things in places think about what you want your workflow to be you know think about the process the steps you're going to take and so for me it was quite as i showed you you know I've, it, most of this is storage right so i'll start with my storage items i've got my jars here and then i've got my oils and then I've got my wicks, so I guess kind of collect what I need. And when I get over to this table, or this table, and while that wax is heating up, then I just come over here, start wicking the jars. Everything's just kind of in a nice assembly line order. And I'm sorry this camera angle is getting wonky as I'm trying to talk and show and, and everything, but again, it all just kind of flows in order. And then once the jars are poured, the materials are made, the candle's set up, then they'll either go to the shelves or storage or boxed up or whatever, wherever they're going, or I'll just take them down here and fulfill an order. Again, it's just really about setting up a workflow, a process, and then building your workshop around your process. That's it. I, uh, I really don't have anything else to show you. Um, if you have any questions, any feedback, I'd love to see them in the comments. Um, some of the things that you saw today, if there's anything you want some more information on, put it in the comments, and I'll, I'll try to schedule that in the videos uh, schedule. But there are a lot of upcoming videos that will talk about a lot of things you saw in this video. So I feel like I just said video like 45 times. But if you have any questions, any comments, I'd love to see it in the, in the, in the feedback in the comments section. Um, until next time, I really appreciate you swinging by again. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, everyone.